Welcome back to the program. We're talking tonight to Liberal MP Alex Hawke, Rowan Dean, columnist with the Fin Review, Tim Ayres, a member of Labor's National Executive and State Secretary of the AMWU, and Labor MP Ed Husick. I want to turn to what's going on in the Labor Party in case you missed it. There's a leadership <laughs> contest happening between <laughs> Bill Shorten and Anthony Albanese. The members are choosing uh, or having a 50% say this time. But Ed Husick, uh, do you really think Labor is engaging in what it, what it needs to after an election loss like this? self-reflection, how to re-engage with those who are no longer voting Labor, whether it should still be a you know, party of the trade unions, where it needs to go on the big policy questions of the future. Where is all of that in this process? So I think you're actually getting a lot of that uh, through this uh, contest. I um, supported. I this, haven't seen much of it. This, I've got to say. Uh, well, uh, and I've, I watched I've watched I, a I lot. I certainly have. There's a lot you of talked about, agreement. You talked about uh, energising mm. uh, people. I've certainly seen that through the membership that now get a chance to have a say um, and are watching the debates and are also you know, having the opportunity to speak to the respective candidates. So they're getting energised with that. Um, okay, what, define, what has either one of them said? Well, what has either one of them said? But you define, but this is, and you, you, your good self and others in the media mm -hmm. define policy as purely on issues of division rather than two candidates staking out different views. No, 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 about no. Where policy, go. okay, policy is one part of it. Let me ask you this. But it has to this. be a fight. And the media's perspective is if it's not a fight, it's not worth watching. No, but surely Labor, after an election defeat, has to think about where you went wrong. What was your primary vote nationally? It was down to 30... 4%, yeah. a bit under 34%, a third or two thirds of Australians aren't voting for you. Which is the point that uh, Bill Shorten's made. Um, so surely you've got to think about why, how do we win them back? Which is the point that Bill Shorten's made in his, and he, he made it this week in terms of the debate and also and in what's other his speeches point? that he's given. What's the main point from and Bill Shorten about how to win them rebuild, back? to rebuild constituencies, to, to be able to broaden the party and to be able to bring new supporters in. And so in terms of the energy, in terms of the policy outline, mm -hmm. in terms of also having the opportunity to reflect about uh, where we should go and I mean all these things were made through the course of the debates this week and the other opportunities that the so what's one, what's that your, one idea that your channel has actually covered I know and, and that's what I'm saying I've watched a lot of it but what's one idea that he's given to broaden uh, the, the party and reach out to these people who didn't vote for well, give me one well in terms of like he's uh, well I'll look at Bill Shorten's uh, perspective going from looking at the focus on science and innovation and being able to grow the economy uh, through that um, through to some of the difficult issues um, that he's raised for example in in respect of domestic violence and being able to as a nation address tough social issues and be able to speak up for people and give voice to people who don't which feel is a very voice. important issue no so, question but is that really going to bring back into the fold all these Australians who've deserted Labor. And being able to, and particularly in terms of Bill's background, of being able to talk not only to the corporate sector, but also to people um, that are either employed, particularly in terms of blue collar workers, but also saying we need to do you know, more in terms of dealing with you know, people who are semi, or who are either small businesses mm. or contractors, and, how do you do and being that? able to do that. And that's and that in terms of setting that goal and being able to have the policy development, which is the other point to your question, which is. Uh, not just one about um, you know, at what point do you reflect on where you've gone wrong and what do you do in terms of policy development. And I don't think it's realistic, frankly, that you do that two weeks out or three weeks out from that election. Um, you need to have that, give that uh, process time. But I think the good thing about this, and the reason I supported it, is because I think it, it requires of people putting themselves forward for leadership to articulate where they would go, what their policy framework is, and that's what you're getting out of these candidates. Tim, do you think um, <coughs> there's something missing in this debate at the moment? This has been an extraordinary process. If you contrast it to what happened to Labor after the 1996 election mm -hmm. or the Liberals after 2007. I mean, the, the, the Liberals after 2007 endorsed Brendan Nelson because they couldn't think of anything else to do. Um, this has energised 41,000 people. It's engaged a lot of people in the community. That's a good thing. Um, the second thing about this process is that I think one of the things that the community wants to see is stable leadership that's got a wide mandate for uh, for leading the party. Uh, I think that's going to make a big difference to the way that the community engages. There is a long way to go. You're right. I mean, I understand that journalists and others want to see a sort of wrist slashing exercise for see, Labor and the Labor that. movement. I don't, I don't but I do that. think that the new leader <clears throat> will have the support uh, from the organisation and for the Labor movement more broadly oh, look, I, to I talk about the issues that, that you're talking beyond. about. How do we build a bigger Labor Party? Yeah, How do we I build a more inclusive Labor Party? goes beyond what we heard Labor say day in, day out during the election campaign. Now, admittedly, there are, as Ed mm. Husick points out, a couple of areas that Bill Shorten's touched on, uh, science and domestic violence. Um, but 
and they are important, but there, there are some big issues that Labor needs to tackle here, don't they? Well, to lift that primary vote from one third of the country. The Labor leadership is a very serious business uh, and um, making sure that Labor elects a leader who's going to um, take a substantial approach to some of these issues, the big economic issues that confront, mm. um, that confront the country, the big policy issues, some of which we've just spent some time talking about, is an immense challenge for Labor. Um, and I think um, I've heard both candidates say things that um, are fresh and new from a, from a Labor movement perspective. Ro Rowan, when uh, Tim makes an interesting point about what uh, other part, what the Liberals have done, what Labor's done historically after losing office, mm. the process they go through, it is it is tough. Um, it's sure interesting it's to tough, watch. The, the problem, the problem <coughs> Ed has, and I do actually feel very sorry for him, is a choice between uh, the guy I call Bill Short on ideas because he doesn't have any, and Anthony all about Measy because it's just all about him. You've got two characters who the Australian people will never vote for, not in a million years. One who stabbed two prime ministers in the back, destroyed two prime ministers. The Australian people will never forgive, forgive that ever. Anthony, uh, Anthony Albanese is a sort of brawler, a sort of street fighter character. He has no charisma, no personality. He's disliked intensely within the Labor Party. As my friend Mark Latham pointed out, uh, there's nothing there to vote for. So you have no the choice. The problem with your sentence whereas, saying my friend where, Mark Latham. Whereas, <laughs> whereas if you had, if you were serious about reforming Labor, you would have yourself, you would have Nick Champion, uh, you would have Steve Jones, people like that standing for the leadership who could be a complete break with the past. There's no one uh, will uh, ever, uh, ever vote for anyone connected too late to get with the, the Rod Gillard fiasco. Look, I, I, um, there are a number of points, uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. and I've got a whole stack of them after what you just said. Um, I'm still getting over the Mark Latham reference. Um, uh, but the point about uh, Anthony Albanese is very well regarded in our party. And, yes, but not outside. And, and uh, well, you know, um, uh, everyone focuses on polls. Uh, I think Tony Abbott's approval, 37, uh, Bill Shorten, 32, Anthony Albanese, 31, and neither of them a leader yet. And you've got you know, your uh, poster boys only getting 37. But you're addicted to polls. You're not, no, you just don't well, get they're it, actually do a pretty you? Good, don't get it. They're pretty good. You've uh, got to move on. Anyone in politics who says they ignore <laughs> polls, you know straight away that there's a credibility issue. Yeah. They're an indicator. And Ron, so, when you say no one's going to vote, what are you basing that on? Exactly. No one will vote for Bill Short because he stabbed two leaders in the back. The just Australian people what, will though? never do that. But what's Anthony it based on? Al Albanese, because it's just common sense. Right. And, that, and Anthony Albanese has never stood for anything. There's nothing oh, in his past. It's just that based, based on... Some, it's, it's, they it's voted for Tony some, Abbott because uh, they knew what he stood really, for. Come on, it, it must, it, if it's common yeah, sense, I'll, maybe I'll, it's common sense at some re re spectator conservative dinner party. I think it's very unlikely that Labor voters and that MPs in the court are going to pay too much attention to what Rowan Dean's got to say about the future Labor right, leadership. We've got ve two very strong candidates. And what people want to see is 41,000 people voting. They don't want to see overt factionalism in the process. They don't want to see... Are you saying there is um, no overt factionalism in the process? They don't want to see process? people centrally determining these things. Is, is they there, want to see there a no broad overt franchise. factionalism in this? Well, I've been very encouraged by what both candidates have had to say mm. about this, and I'm yeah, very what's confident... what's really going on? I'm very what's confident... What's really going on, though? That, well, I've seen... Uh, MPs from both sides of the factional divide uh, line up and Maybe say that they'll support other candidates. Maybe one member of the right in Parliament who's going to vote for Anthony Albanese. Well, they don't, they, they don't, they don't ring me and tell me. Is there um, one, Ed Isaac? Well, I, I understood that uh, Kevin's indicated, and I may be speaking um, out of school and he hasn't necessarily indicated, but he and uh, Anthony have gotten on strongly for many years. Uh, and there may be um, uh, you know, people that vote from either uh, side of the factional divide for the other candidate, but I, I do. So the right's um, not locked in. You're saying the right's not locked in with no. And a lot of this talk about people being locked in and told what to do, I thought was nonsense. Um, but again, it doesn't stop people from writing that stuff. But the, can I just say, yes, in terms yeah. of Anthony, um, you know, Anthony has felt very passionately, uh, particularly in all the work that he's done in. Um, in terms of making our cities a lot more livable as infrastructure minister mm. and not going he'd through be, all his portfolio, great local councillor. Um, he's not a prime portfolio minister. issues uh, that he's worked on. Oh, I won't go through all that, that stuff, but he has felt very passionately, very strongly about these issues and he's held in high regard across the factional okay, spectrum. Well, okay, um, okay. And Clearly Shorten, we have different views on that. But hang on a second, but Bill Shorten, in terms of being one of the key architects of disability care, 
um, you know, that is an enormous credit to him. So, okay. as Tim Alex, said, two Hawk, strong um, candidates. Oh, no, no, don't I want to, interrupt no, these I guys. I bring I mean, you into this debate. <laughs> Do you see any merit in this sort of democratisation process, giving members a say in who should lead a party? Oh, look, anything that could break the Labor Party out of this depressing who's leader routine they've been running for the last six years, you know, strikes me as a good thing. I mean, it's very sad to see the state of the modern Labor Party. I mean, it's healthy for democracy to have <clears> two <throat> viable parties, and at the moment, there's been one party in absolute Do you chaos. See any uh, any merit in this process for the Liberals? Uh, you mean internal democratisation? Yeah, like if you had a choice the... against, say, Tony Abbott, who would you vote for? <laughs> no, I'm saying... No, well, I'd giving, vote for Tony Abbott. I'm uh, very happy okay, with no, my choice. Just giving no, the members, giving your choice. Liberal Party members mm. a chance, or a say, some say, in who the leader should be. Uh, look, I think our system works pretty well. We've got uh, internal unity at all levels of the party. Um, and, you know, in, in, when we've had our troubles in the past and following the last uh, defeat that we had, we had very strong choices for future leaders. Strong you choices. just went through them all fairly quickly. Well, so we you, you Brendan think... Nelson and, and Malcolm Turnbull are both very senior figures in you, the Howard government. You don't, government you don't think there's an argument people. for giving members of the Liberal Party a, a say? Uh, look, I don't think there is a call for people to have a say in the leadership. I think it's best retained in the parliamentary okay. party, and it's the parliamentary party who have to live with it ultimately. And couple, couple people have a say ultimately anyway. I mean, they have a say at the elections, and the Australian people have just chosen a prime minister, and they've chosen Tony Abbott. Look, a couple of other issues I, I, I want to talk about here. Um, there's a possible Senate vacancy coming up in New South Wales if the former Foreign Minister Bob Carr, uh, as many expect he will, decides to go. Um, it was reported in the Financial Review today that Australia's most senior Islamic cleric, uh, the Grand Mufti Dr Ibrahim Abu Muhammad, threatened to withdraw support for Labor in Western Sydney at Husic uh, if Paul Howes was chosen. Now, ultimately, he decided uh, not to contest that um, possible Senate vacancy. Um, but the, uh, the Grand Mufti was apparently had written an email uh, saying that uh, Paul Howes had shown blind bias for Israel uh, and that um, uh, his appointment would not at all help the engagement effort between the ALP and the wider Muslim community. Um, as a Western Sydney MP mm -hmm. and as uh, the only MP of the Muslim faith, is this report correct and did the Grand Mufti try to influence the internal workings of the ALP? Well, a number of things. First, um, uh, you're right to reflect on the fact that you know Bob Carr's still got to make his yeah. his decision as to what happens. And what we've been seeking to do um, in the event that that occurs is to broaden and deepen, diversify our Senate representation. And that's why um, you've had uh, some consideration given to two strong candidates in terms of Deb O'Neill, a former uh, member for Robertson, and also uh, Tara Moriarty from the Union Movement, from United Voices, been a you know well regarded within the within the uh, within the ranks. So and Mike Kelly. As well. And Mike Kelly's another name that's been put forward, but uh, we are looking, as I said, to diversify our representation. Okay, and but but on the, on the, but on the issue of the on, on the issue of this email that was supposed to have gone round, and uh, I was approached uh, on this yesterday, and I couldn't recall receiving it because in the week, uh, actually, my uh, a number of MPs experienced their bodies conking out on them straight after the the campaign, and I was pretty crook. I couldn't even recall it. Mm. Uh, but have you having said it up that, today, have, having said that. Um, uh, with all due respect uh, to the Grand Mufti, these type of issues, as I said, where we're looking at our Senate representation, are managed internally within the ALP. They are not uh, managed uh, through this type of process, and we uh, take our own guidance on these decisions. So, so you probably wouldn't listen to this sort of advice well, from the Grand Mufti? When I was approached on this by the Australian Financial Review, um, I made the point that no one in considering what we do with the Senate um, had once said, with due respect, um, what was the view of the, the Grand Mufti, you know, in terms of mm. what we would do there. Um, that, there was no weight given to that email whatsoever. But how important none. is that... Um, but I just uh, want to make this point. Yeah. Even though we had said that to the Australian Financial Review, they still proceeded with the story anyway. And so, um, again, you'll get a lot of people that make... But isn't, isn't the point here, should someone in that position... Um, the most senior Islamic cleric here be trying to influence the internal workings of Labor, trying to influence who should or shouldn't be chosen for a Senate spot? Absolutely not. I don't think it should. And I, does that concern you that, that based on the reported comments that uh, his, uh, Paul Howes' appointment would not at all help the engagement effort between the ALP and the wider Muslim community? That sounds a bit like a threat. In, in, a, um, uh, in a democracy, you're going to have a variety of views. The issue is what weight you put to those views in mm. making decisions about, particularly within a political party. That's the issue for Labor. I'm saying the issue for and so, the Grand Mufti here. Uh, should he be doing that? And, and I, as I said a few moments ago, I don't think that's right. I think it's hugely counterproductive. Um, it wasn't the, uh, from what I understand, the Grand Mufti himself it was someone attached to the, um, to the office. 
um, and I don't think that's been helpful whatsoever. All right. Anyone got a comment on that? Well, if, I mean, as Ed says, who knows if the story is true or not, but um, what hasn't been reported on a great deal is that under Labor, and there was a fascinating article by Greg Sheridan in The Australian today, mm. um, under Labor uh, we saw a lot of moves within the United Nations voting, moving against Israel, uh, and that's something that the Labor Party has clearly struggled with internally. You had the whole issue between Bob Carr and, and Julia, uh, Gillard. Julia Gillard over, you know, the Palestinian situation and so on, but Greg Sheridan actually identifies, you know, nearly a dozen measures where uh, the Labor Party have shifted Australia's position against Israel, either by moving to an abstention or to a vote against. Right. And that uh, both uh, Tony Abbott and Julie Bishop intend to reverse that. So that's something the Labor Party needs to own up to, that they have done that. All, 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 all yeah, I've got from this discussion really is that Rowan needs to expand his reading. I mean, if you really get your worldview from <laughs> Greg Sheridan and Mark Latham, you've got big problems. Um, both ends. There's, broad there's, church, Tim. Um, there's broad no church. vacancy. Sheridan Last time Bob, Bob Carr spoke about this, he said he he wanted to be the, the uh, Senator Bird of the Australian Senate and I think... Um, Do you reckon he'll stick uh, around? Well, well, we'll see. It's a, it's a matter for him and he hasn't made any announcement yet. I just think it's disappointing. Your name's not in the mix too, uh, Tim Let's, uh, let's quickly take a break. Back with more. Stay with us.